This is going to be Joel chapter 2, and we're going to look at the lost man's senses at the second coming. Joel 2, 1 says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alar alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Many men teach that the Joel 2, 1 through 11 is referring to the locust army in Revelation chapter 9. But in Numbers 10, 4 through 6, blowing a trumpet and sounding alarm has to do with war and not locusts. And verses 1 through 11 has to do with Jesus Christ coming back with his army of saints out of heaven at the second coming. This is yet future. And we will go up in a rapture one day. Then after the tribulation, we'll come back down with the Lord to set up the millennial kingdom. And there's going to be a bloody war take place as Jesus Christ comes back. Verses 1 through 11 is a description of what that will be like and a description of our glorified bodies. If you look at the book of Jude... It says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So the Lord's coming back with ten thousands of his saints. And Revelation 19.14 says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So Joel 2, 1 says the day of the Lord is nigh at hand. The day primarily has to do with the second coming, and that's what we are seeing here. So with that short intro, let's look at the lost man's senses at the second coming. Number one, what will the lost man hear at the second coming? So Joel 2, 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is not at hand. This seems to be an alarm that will go off in the heavenly Mount Zion, but possibly the inhabitants of the earth will hear it. They are going to tremble. They are even said to hide in the dens and rocks of the mountains in the book of Revelation. You'll see how they hide from Jesus Christ. But look down at verse 3 in Joel 2, which describes the saints coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to have a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, which is the word of God. It is going to be like a flamethrower going off in front of their faces. In Joel 2, 3, it says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land, also, the land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Imagine hearing the flames and the sound of men burning. This is what the lost will hear as they see the Lord Jesus Christ devouring everything in front of him. 2 Thessalonians 2.8 And then shall that wicked be revealed... Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That wicked is referring to the Antichrist. The Lord will consume him because God is a consuming fire. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 And flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the lost are going to hear the most terrifying sounds that they have ever heard. They didn't want to hear the gospel. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They didn't want to hear and obey the gospel. So now they got to hear a living nightmare. And the chapter goes on further to describe saints coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says about our appearance in verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Remember the verse where it said we will be coming back on horses? with the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine being a lost man at the second coming and hearing the sound of horses running behind you. Joel 2, 5, Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people 
set in battle array. So Jesus Christ and his saints are coming back on your trail, wailing and howling. Imagine that. Imagine hearing Jesus Christ. Micah 1.8 Therefore I will wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a howling like the dragons and mourning as the owls. So Jesus Christ, when he comes back on that white horse, he's going to be wailing and howling. In verse 9 of chapter 2, it talks about how the Lord's army, which is the saints, will enter in the windows like a thief. Imagine being a lost man in your house and all of a sudden some immortal beings bust in your window. Joel 2, 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb in. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. And you know in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says in verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. If you're not saved and you're alive during this time, that day is going to overtake you as a thief. The day that overtakes them as a thief is this day of the Lord. Notice it says sudden destruction cometh upon them in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. Matthew 24, 43 and 44 it says, But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So there's so many references to the Lord Jesus Christ and his saints coming back as a thief. Revelation 16:15 says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Obviously, this is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what else are you going to hear? Joel 2.10 says, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Notice how these things match what is described in Matthew 24 when it refers to the Lord coming back. Not to take us out in the rapture, but coming back with us to take over. In Matthew 24, 29 through 30, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days so shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So notice, you have an earthquake in Joel 2.10. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Matching the events of Matthew 24, the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Then you could look at Revelation chapter 6. 12 through 17, this also matches this event, which says, And I beheld him when he had opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is broke, shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island removed out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You see, these people are terrified of what they're hearing. The second coming is a terrifying event. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the light wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his, wrath is, of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Can you imagine being a lost sinner at the second coming? And hearing the rumbling of the earth as the Lord shakes it, causing the biggest earthquake to ever hit the planet. Imagine hearing the buildings fall 
and the people screaming. In Joel 2.11, it says, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Notice it calls him not only it calls it not only his army, but also his camp. There are three armies mentioned in this chapter, and as I said, this is the army that comes back with the Lord at the second coming. In Joel two eleven it says, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So the Lord's voice is powerful. This is the same voice that said, let there be light. This is the same voice that will destroy the Antichrist with the spirit of his mouth. It says, for he is strong that executeth his word. And at the second coming, the sword, which is the words of God, will pierce through the enemy. He will execute his word. Revelation 19, 15. This is a verse about the second coming. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. Can you imagine hearing the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he comes back with a vengeance? Can you imagine hearing the person who made the worlds, hearing his voice, an angry voice? But these are just things that you'll hear. Now let's look at what you'll see. Let's rewind it all the way back to verse 1. Joel 2, 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. What you're going to see with your own eyes is the look of terror on people's faces when they hear what's coming. You think the panic going on about the coronavirus was bad? Imagine that you can see people running scared to death, running for their lives. Because it calls it in verse 2 a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong that hath not ever been the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Did you know that men love darkness rather than light? And John 3, 19 through 20, it says, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. At the second coming, they're going to get darkness. It's a day of darkness and gloominess. Joel is a doom and gloom preacher. There isn't another kind of preacher. It's a day of clouds. It says in verse 2, And you know how the Lord is coming back? In Revelation 1-7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. So he's coming back with clouds. Joel chapter 2 says it's a day of clouds. Revelation 1 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Imagine looking up and seeing God and millions of his saints coming back. Every eye shall see him. That's what you'll see is Jesus Christ in a glorified body with nail prints in his hands and feet. As it says he, he has in Revelation 1, 13 through 16, you'll see that it says he has his hairs are white like wool, as white as snow, his eyes are as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Notice it says his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. This matches verse 2 in Joel 2. Joel said it was as the morning spread upon the mountains. This is because the sun is coming up. The S-O-N sun, who is brighter than the S-U-N sun. Malachi 4.2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness 
Arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So, Jesus Christ is the Son of Righteousness. And he's coming back on this day of darkness. And he's going to have eyes like a flame of fire. Imagine the look on people's faces when they look at a threshing machine coming straight for them. Imagine seeing that. So Joel 2, 3, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape escape them. Did you know that men love to look at fire? And they're going to have plenty of chance to get to here. The Lord is going to destroy everything by fire. The first time he used a flood. This time he uses fire and nothing hurts worse than getting burned. It will be like an atomic blast going off in their face. Joel 2, 6, before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Joel 2, 4, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. So the lost world will see the Lord's army, God's people on, in glorified bodies, an army that they could be a part of, they could have been a part of, but they chose the devil. They chose the losing side. Joel 2.10, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. So they're going to see signs in the heavens above. People are always looking at the moon, talking about blood moons, talking about a full moon. The sun, the moon, and the stars is going to give them something to talk about when they look up and see it. So you're going to hear something terrifying. A lot of the reason horror movies are scary is because of how they do music and sound effects. You're going to be scared because of not only what you hear, but what you see. And next, your smell at the second coming will also be something to think about. What will you smell? Let's rewind back to the beginning of Job chapter 2 and look at verse 3. A fire devoureth before them. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So you'll smell the fire. You'll smell the smoke. You'll smell burning flesh. You'll smell blood. Revelation 14, 19 through 20 tells you how much blood that there's going to be at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to be trampling over people like grapes. Imagine the smell of blood. And next, what will you taste? Joel 2, 6, before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. You'll taste the smoke and the fire and the blood, so much blood that men will drown in it like water, and the Lord will cause them to eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. Isaiah 49, 26 says, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Just a t terrifying time. A time that people don't even know is in the Bible because they think the Bible is just a sweet little devotional book. When they see you reading the Bible, they think, oh, how sweet. They don't know this is in there. They don't know something so horrifying and terrifying is wrote in this book. But next, what will you feel and touch at the second coming? The darkness that the Lord brought over Egypt shows that the Lord was much more powerful than any sun god, any S-U-N god, because this darkness was felt. The Lord showed his superiority over the sun over the sun god in Exodus ten twenty one <coughs> in Exodus ten twenty one it says and the Lord said unto Moses Stretch out thine hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. You will feel the darkness at the second coming. Joel two two a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong, there hath not ever been the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So you'll feel 
the darkness. And many times you can feel gloominess. You'll feel the sword of the word of God piercing your flesh. And there will be absolutely no defense against the Lord and his army. Joel 2, 7 and 8. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one on his path, in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. You can't kill them if they can't be wounded. You'll feel those horses trampling over you like you're less than the dirt on the ground because you refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. All your senses at the second coming will make you completely terrified. What you hear, what you see, what you feel, these are the lost man's senses at the second coming. So I hope this will cause you to think about your your future, your eternal soul, if you're not saved, the soul of everyone around you. Because this is going to be a ter terrifying time if you're going to be on the receiving end of this. So I want to give you the gospel. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then in verse 4 he says, And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. And if you will trust in him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin, then you can be saved and have eternal life. You're not saved by doing good. You're not saved by joining a church or being baptized or by living any type of good life. You're saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you come to him right now, the best way you know how, and tell him that you know you're a sinner and you know you're going to hell and you want him to be your savior, then he will save you this very moment. And you will no longer have to worry about going through such a horrible time or going to hell when you die. You'll know that you'll be eternally secure and that you'll be heaven bound and that you'll be on the winning side on the Lord's, the side of the Lord's army during this second coming.